What's going on everybody? Today I'm working on the old Suburban. I got to service the diffs in this thing. I got some leaks. I got a broken bolt I got to extract. And generally speaking, in this video, I'm just going to do all that and I'm going to yak and talk about axles and answer some questions I see on uh, Facebook groups and forums and stuff. So it'll be like if you are just sitting on a center block bullcrapping with me while I'm doing this work. So grab a beer and stand by. Bolt front axle come under old school square body pickups through the 80s and the early 90s. And I think, yeah, the late 70s too. The way you identify this from a Dana 44 is those little ears right there. And the differential uh, cover itself is more round. I see a lot of people say they have a Dana 44 in front of the truck. And even though in the 70s, they did have Dana 44s from the factory, uh, most of them are 10 bolts that I see. This is a Dana 44. Notice how the uh, cover is not quite as round. Um, some people call that a stop sign shape. And you notice they don't have those little ears hanging off the corners either. I can see them things coming down the road and tell what it's got under the front end. It's because I'm used to looking at them. And then in this, under this pile of crap I got back here, you got the way you kayak. This is, this is a Dana 60 right here. Boy, that was a lizard over there. I thought it was a snake. I about jumped. It looks just like Dana 44. It's just bigger. And you notice how big the tubes are. And then if you notice, this also has kingpins on them. If you have one of those under your truck, you either put it under there or you got a K30 from the factory. Now that we got all that out of the way, let's get to work. Or you watch me work. If you notice, I don't know if it's showing up good in the camera or not. I got leaks right here. I got a broken bolt right there. It's broke off in the housing. I took that one out so I can match the bolts up. I'm getting new bolts. But I have leaks. This is all covered in gear oil. And I have to fix it. And all I'm gonna do is pull the cover off and clean it all up and reseal it, get that bolt out, put new bolts in it. One thing I wanted to show everyone is um, if you have a differential leak, and it don't matter if it's a front or a rear differential or any of them, the number one cause of leaks is the vent. Always gotta check the vent. And looky there. Can you see the end of it? Well, first off, that hose is not hooked up. It's been cut. It was like that when I bought the truck and I didn't do nothing about it. I'm gonna fix all that today. But if you look in there, it looks like a dirt dauber made a real estate investment in that hose. When that vent's plugged up, and you're using that differential as it makes heat and it expands that's what that vents for and then it cools back down if you don't have some vent action going on it takes uh it blows out the weakest link which sometimes can be the diff cover or uh the seal between the diff cover and the housing it could be the uh inner seals in here that's behind there and then the oil run out the ends it could be your pinion seal whatever's leaking on that differential um, before you do any kind of replacements on seals, check the vents. All right. I know a lot of people probably already know this, but there's probably somebody who don't. Best way to knock this cover off, to drain it, is take all the bolts out and leave that top guy up there. Leave him on there, but leave him finger loose like this. And then, just take your screwdriver, you get in behind it and just kind of give it a little, oh yeah. Ooh, this is stanky. Super stanky. They want a whole lot in there. That wasn't good. All right, now that we're waiting for all that to drain out, it's kind of goopy, it's stanky. I hear a lot of people, and I've been asked this most times, how do locking hubs work, the manual locking hubs? Those bad boys. So, if you take a look, you 
see the axle shaft where the U-joint is, where the stub shaft and the axle shaft go together. If you notice, if you spin this tire, let me back it up, it no spinning. The tire is on its own because the hub's unlocked. But if we come over here and lock this bad boy in, if she's on lock, then you hear it make a noise. And now we have spinny things happening. So that front axle is connected to the tire now. That is awesome because if you have manual locking hubs, your front axle is not spinning while it's going down the road. So if you have a front axle issue, you can just unlock your hubs and nothing in there is moving. And now that we're talking about spinny things and axles being locked up and stuff, let's talk about lockers. People all the time that have open differentials say that they catch posi. I hear that crap all the time. No, it did not catch posi. What happens is, if you have an open differential, the tire with the least amount of traction gets the power. So if both your tires turn, that means that the traction surface is similar or somewhat similar enough that they both did it. And I'm gonna show you, watch this. So, turn the tire, I'm turning it. And you see that right there? You see the spider gears in there turning? And you see, if I turn this tire this way, that axle shaft is turning opposite. And the tire would be turning if I had the hub locked in on that side, but I don't. So, one way without pulling a cover to see if anything's got some kind of locking device in it is if the tire's off the ground and you turn the tire one way and the other tire turns the same direction, you know you have some sort of a traction aid device, whether it be a LSD, a locker, something in there. But if you pick it up off the ground, you turn the tire and it turns the opposite, uh, this tire one way and the other tire turns the opposite direction, you have an open differential. Another question I hear all the time is how do I know which gear ratio I got in my axles? Well, if you're doing a, uh, if you're sealing up a cover like this and you're changing the oil, Now's a good time to find out if you didn't already know. So what you can do when you got it apart, is you see the pinion way back there? If you count the teeth on it, and then count the teeth on your ring gear, and divide the two, that'll give you your axle ratio. But a lot of times you ain't gotta do a whole lot of counting. Let's see if I can get this thing to turn. Okay, I don't turn this thing all the way around and this particular ring gear don't have it. But sometimes stamping the outside of the ring gear, it'll say like 41 dot dot 10. Which is what I thought this one said on it. I know this is a 410. If you don't have that, then you do have to count. But if it's got if you turn the ring gear all the way around and you find that stamping on it, a lot of times it'll tell you the ring gear. You should divide the 41 by the 10, that'll give you 410. Or whatever it ends up being. And now for the real fun part. I gotta get this bolt extracted out of this housing or what's left of that bolt. And I've been a mechanic for many, 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 many years and getting a bolt out always sucks. Every time. So let's see how quick I can get this thing out. All right, before you start drilling around an open differential, I'm gonna cover him up. Try to minimize the amount of shavings, drill shavings that get in there when you do like this and if anything jumps on that rag when you pull the rag off it'll fall down and it'll keep it out of your gear set because metal shavings floating around is not cool for a differential. Let's see if I can do this. Come on, baby. Come on out of there. Oh, is it gonna be that easy?
Yay! That is what success looks like, folks. Now, I don't know if it might see, see them little uh, shavings right there? That's why I put this rag up here. And now all I gotta do, look, there's another one right there. It slings them everywhere. You just take the rag and go. And all the shavings go on the ground. All right, so after I got that bolt out last night, I got sidetracked and had a bunch of other crap to do. So now it's the next day and I'm getting back on it. And it rained all morning, so now it's the afternoon, so I got to rush. So get another beverage and get your uh, cinder block and we're gonna continue this. I'm gonna clean this thing up real quick. All right, I got everything hooked back up on there. It's time to put some fluid in it. Now, hang on. The book calls for 80W90. That's what I'm gonna put in the front. I'll put something different in the back. I'll get to that in a minute because we're getting ready to do the back. But um, I think most probably, or most people probably know this, but the plug's right there. And all you have to do is fill it up until it runs out the plug. All right, so you got a gallon jug like this. How do you pour it into differential? Here it is. I bought this thing years ago. You probably can buy them offline. I don't know. I don't even remember where I got this thing from, but it's red and it's called the lube loop. Look at there, lube loop. Anyway, this end, you can put a quart bottle in or a gallon jug bottle. And then it's got a switch right here. See, it says lock. When you open it up, it's got a little lube symbol. That's how you cut it on and off. And you just, oh, I forgot about that. Where's my knife? It just screws right on the top. Like so. Hopefully I picked that up on the camera. And then you've got a nice little hose to put it, lube wherever you need it at. Go lube loop. All snap is lubing. It's going. Oh, it's, it's seriously going. Oh, uh, look at that trying to come out. Almost done. Good job, Blue Loop. Oh, it faked me out. It's not good yet. There it is. things when you put your hose up there make sure you leave a little extra for your suspension travel now that thing's plumbed all the way up there by the battery box and number two do not waste your money buying gloves from Home Depot these grease monkey gloves ain't worth it yet. I would know you look at them wrong when they rip I got look at my hands where they ripped don't do it. Now let's spin this thing around to talk about and work on a 14 bolt. Now I look them under the back. Look at that bad boy. That's a 14 bolt. And they call it that because it's got 14 bolts all the way around. This is GM's HD axle. 
These came factory on 2500 Suburbans, but there's a slight difference. This has been swapped in. Look at him, he's thick. Look at him, boy. Look at them tubes. He's thick. I got disc brakes on mine. So the 14 bolt that come factory in Suburban, three quarter ton Suburbans, was a semi float. This is a full float. You notice the bolts in the middle? That's how you know it's a full float. You can unbolt this and the whole axle will slide out without even taking the tire off. They are a little bit more heavy duty, if you will. Uh, this axle came out of a, it was either a 98 or 99 K3500. I got it from a junkyard. All I had to do was uh, move the uh, axle purchase in a different location because this is a square body and that one's a GMT 400 chassis. And everything else, I set the pinion angle. It's been beautiful, but I got the same kind of leak on the back that I had on the front. And when I get this thing up in the air, it's got a G80 locker in it, a gov lock. I'll show you how that works. Oh, uh, something else. So, uh, I should have talked about this when I had the 10 bolt open. The only difference between your HD 10 bolt, which is like a three quarter ton 10 bolt, and your half ton 10 bolt front, and that goes for the 44s as well, if you've got a Dana 44, is the rotor and the bearings in the front. So if you've got a half ton 10 bolt front axle in your square body truck and you want to run a one ton rear, that's eight lug, all you have to do in most cases is buy a set of rotors, the rotor hub assembly, the whole mess, and some bearings and it's good to go. Sometimes you have to change the spindle but you have to measure it to see if you need to change it. Most of the time you just put rotors on it and you're good to go. You can run a one ton eight lug set up in the back and just get you some eight lug wheels and you're good to go. Look at that big boy. Look at them big gears. So earlier in the video when I was talking about that sometimes they have numbers stamped in them. So it says, let's see, 10, 41. You divide those two numbers and it comes up with 410. So um, that's a quick way to see what your gear ratio is. The front didn't have it, the back did. And this one has a gov locker in it. Let me see if I can get it to lock in. <laughs> Trying to demonstrate locking that thing in was a pain in the butt. I had to crank the truck up. I couldn't spin it fast enough by hand. Anyway, um, the 14 bolts with the gov lock are better than the 10 bolts with a gov lock. The gov lock, the 10 bolt rear with a gov lock is uh, known as the gov bomb. They ain't worth a crap. Really? They ain't worth a crap, they blow up all the time. That little pieces come apart. The 14 bolt is not as bad. I still wouldn't put it in like a hardcore rock crawl on a wheeling truck. But for this thing right here, it does great. It's really helpful for backing a trailer up this gravel driveway on the side over here. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing to the back one here that I did to the front one. So there ain't really no, nothing to show. It's just like the front one, just take the cover off, drain the juice out of there, and uh, clean it up, put the cover back on, put the juice back in. The only thing I wanna show you that's different, the field plug on a 14 bolt is right here. There's no plug in that cover. You just take this bolt out and do the same thing, fill it up till it runs out. Now in the back, I use 85, w140 in the 14 bolt i use this in the front the book will tell you to use this in the back and if you do that's fine i just like the thicker 85 140 for the rear because it's some hd axle and i tow and stuff and that little packet of um additive that they give you that says that it won't the rear end won't lock up if you don't have it in there um i don't ever use that and i don't have no trouble so don't waste your money on that. If you've got a gov lock, um, you don't need that packet of juice that they give you. They, they say it won't work. I know they'll tell you that, but I ain't had no trouble with it. I don't ever put it in there. I just put grease in there and the thing locks up. All right, I got to rush to finish this thing up. So finish your beer and go on to the house. I got to, I can't talk no more. I got to go. You see what's happening behind me? It's getting ready to get, I'm getting ready to get wet. I've been screwing around for too long. Anyway, if you like the video, you know what to do. Just hit the like button. If you like square body stuff, uh, consider giving me a subscribe. I do all kinds of stuff, uh, projects, DIY, mechanic work, grass stuff, whatever. If you're interested in all that, go check out the other videos. 
All that being said, thanks for watching. Come back and see me.